watched them every Saturday morning. And there's a lot of things that I went through, uh, especially with my relationship with horses. Um, I kind of let my mom get into the way of that, and I quit horses for a long time. And had to overcome a really bad car wreck. But of course, the first thing that I was concerned about was whether I could ride my horse again. And that was when I was 17 or 18 years old. And just kind of dealing with all kinds of things in your life that sometimes you can't afford horses. Sometimes other things become more important. And I always comes right back around to if I'm not with horses, I just don't feel like a whole person. Living with my horse and driving those cattle. Uh, my name's Hilda Keller, and I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I live in Jolton, Tennessee now for two and a half years. And I'd really like to be a wild card for Road to the Horse. I think that uh, I have a good way with horses and a good way to st start colts. And I believe that it would help further my career in the horse training industry. And I feel like it, I could be a benefit to horses and people. That's the life for me. I know it seems kind of weird for Miami to have a lot of horse, horses and horse country, but back then there was a lot of wide open spaces and cattle farms, and my mom grew up with horses, so it seemed pretty natural for me to follow in her footsteps, and on my third birthday, they bought a little cart pony at auction, and my mom bucked her out that morning, and they gave her to me that afternoon, and Snowflake proceeded to run me around the arena and bucked me off I don't know how many times, but I guess I was hooked from that day forward. Since I was a young teenager and starting my first cult, you know, for friends and family, I would have to say I've started over 50, 60 cults since then, if you include there was a time in my life when I was without horses, and at this point in time, I'm probably riding at least a dozen horses or more every year. I got for free from a family in Davie, Florida. Very well-bred, beautiful Appaloosa mare. Four white socks and a blaze. She was black, she was gorgeous. And I didn't know at the time, but she was very hateful and mean of men and of a lot of people in general. I started her, and then we sent her to a professional trainer, and that mare could do anything. Anything you, you asked her to do, she could do it. She wrote English, Western, jumped. I taught her to do barrels. She could pole bend, trail road beautifully. She was a halter champion. That's, she's my most memorable. My training method, I borrow a little bit. I'm not gonna lie and say it's all original because no one's training methods are all original but I do borrow from certain trainers and then kind of blend it in with things that I've learned over the past that to correct or mold or shape horses in the training process. And I mean, we were doing natural horsemanship before it was even called natural horsemanship. I remember starting my first colt at 16 
and sacking them out and desensitizing them to things and teaching them to flex and to bend. And I mean, we always started off bitless and we did everything as natural as possible and always just strove to create a good bond between horse and rider and make sure everyone understands what's going on in the training process. Um, probably, I would have to say, my biggest influences in horse training. I really like Julie Goodnight. Um, I like the way she handles horses. Uh, Clinton Anderson has some good things about him, as does Pat Pirelli. And there's a trainer that trains cutting and reining horses by the name of Larry Troca that uh, I follow a lot of his training methods as well. When I first meet a horse that I'm either going to start as a colt or do a tune-up or deal with, you know, personality conflicts with horse and rider or just problems in general, um, I usually spend a couple of days grooming and getting to know the horse, especially at feeding time, seeing how they interact with people other than myself and with other horses. And I usually can figure out a horse pretty quickly and know where to go from there if we have a scaredy cat or we have a bully <laughs> or someone who's angry or has an emotional problems. Well, you know, when you're riding an animal that weighs 1,200 pounds, as we all know, anything can happen. And if they really wanted to hurt you, they could. And for especially with my students that I teach in riding, it gives them such great confidence to know a little six-year-old girl that weighs 48 pounds can make my 1,200-pound horse trot around the arena, stop and back up and do what she wants him to do. The smile on her face at the end of every lesson makes it all worthwhile to me. Well, having a trust and a bond between horse and rider you're really on top of the world. And it doesn't just stop when you get out of the saddle. It helps you through everything in your life. And sometimes people need that a little more than they think that they do. And I know that I can do it. Ooh, that made me cry. <laughs> Horse training may look glamorous, haha, -ha, especially when you're mucking stalls, but uh, it comes with a price. And I've learned in the past year and a half what a big price that you pay, uh, three concussions in 11 months from riding the problematic horses that nobody else wants to ride and getting bucked off and kicked, and a broken arm and a smashed face, but I've started to wear a helmet to uh, help with that. When I need a helmet, I wear one. I'm not too proud to do that anymore. And that's just a risk you take, you know? Every time you put your foot in the stirrup and swing your leg over a horse, you run the risk of getting hurt. And to me, it's worth it. When I can hand the reins over back to the owner and say, here, your problem is fixed. Now let me see you ride your horse and then I help it owner learn how to ride their horse again it's just all worthwhile to me that's what makes me that's why i do what i do